SMT, it stands for Structure Monitoring Technology, and I'm one of the, the founders and partners in SMT, and Stan is one of our directors of sales. And I'll walk you through basically what I think is most appropriate for, uh, I believe that our relationship may come together through roof scanning, roof monitoring uh, systems, uh, of which we brand DigiScan and Building Intelli. Uh, but we also do a lot of investigative monitoring watching and looking at how roof assemblies and wall assemblies age over time and helping clients uh, pinpoint where to perform maintenance or if they're only upgrading certain building components um, where we can basically uh, help with evaluation of what works and what doesn't uh, we also do flood monitoring as well so if you're talking data centers healthcare facilities um, we do lots of uh, commercial based flood monitoring solutions as well. Today I'll go through an introduction to SMT, inverted roof assemblies, conventional roof assemblies, then some case studies. And then if you're interested or still have time, I know people are running off. We'll, we'll go into some of the investigative monitoring that we do. The uh, Everything that we do is based around um, using electronics to install uh, within a building or to use them for quality assurance purposes within the construction industry. And we do everything from uh, green roofs, inverted roof assemblies, wall systems, as well as heavy structures such as bridge decks, um, parkades, dams, um, particle accelerators, that type of infrastructure as well. But today I'll primarily focus on quality assurance uh, within the construction realm and primarily the commercial and institutional construction. Um, one of the things that often get asked is, why do we remotely monitor a uh, structure? <coughs> and one of the easiest ways to explain, you see a big old tire on your screen. Um, that represents basically our tires of yesteryears, very similar to the roofs of yesteryears. You used to just install it, expect to get 20,000 miles out of it, and basically you'd go and change it. There wasn't a whole lot of asset um, there to, to work. It wasn't a high-performing component of the car but as uh, cars have got better roofs have as well our buildings expect a lot more and in an analogy to how to monitor a roof or how to monitor a tire system is very much a good parallel I mean if you can visually see a roof membrane or still a lot within our construction um, industry we use visual inspections like going up and giving that tire kick as part of the overall inspection regime and quality assurance that goes on in the industry. I remember my grandfather going up to the pickup truck and giving the four tires a kick before we got into it. So from that perspective, it's still very much used. And uh, other ways of sort of getting a status of your tire was to take a tire pressure gauge. You know, you'll see these also in a digital format, they basically form the, the same basis of getting a point in time measurement of what's going on right at that that particular time. Now it'd be difficult um, to inspect the inside of the tire. So often we, we look at characteristics around the tire to look at how it's performing. And like in conventional roofs, you're probably aware of using infrared thermography, capacitance scanning um, as methods of checking out the current status or an inverted roof assembly using a voltage, low voltage scan or a high voltage dry scan to look where holes are in the membrane during the time of construction. These all have their valid uh, points would be really difficult on the car that you use to drive into work today or the bus that you may have used um, to be taking that tire pressure as you're going down the interstate. It would be difficult uh, to be doing that at 75 mile an hour. So the automotive industry added <clears throat> real-time monitoring and it's a TMPS sensor, tire pressure monitoring sensors, to pretty much all late model cars and it in real time reports back the status of each individual tire. Now this was for three reasons. One, to protect the asset of the tire. I mean, $120 a blowout, um, and you don't know that you have a flat tire. You can do damage not only to the tire, but to the rim. And this is very similar to a roof leak. You can do damage to the roof and, uh, and the roof itself. Ultimately, those tire pressure sensors are put there to increase fuel efficiency. Likewise, we use monitoring systems to increase the overall efficiency of a roof system by keeping it dry and and, and the like. But ultimately that tire pressure sensor was put there to protect the true assets inside the car, that of your 
children, your wife, and yourself driving the car down the road. And similarly for the roof monitoring systems, we put them in to protect not just the roof system, the asset of the roof, but also the business assets that may be below this um, building will amount to 10 to 100 times the actual value of the roof itself. So, uh, so overall, that's what SMT does. Each one of these dashboards represents a project which we've been working on. This is an inverted roof assembly where you tell within a 10 foot by 10 foot grid uh, remotely as to where uh, a leak has occurred. In the conventional roof assembly, and I'll show these both as case studies in a little bit. Uh, somewhere along this detection tape, there's water, but you'll see that we've been able to identify uh, the three locations where the water was and the water is today uh, correlated to weather-related events. So it's, uh, it's an interesting uh, segment within the industry that we're able to do uh, not only roof investigations where we're cutting open roofs, figuring out what's going on underneath them by installing electronics, but we have a scanning um, methodology similar to to electric field vector mapping that you may have used in the past, uh, but ultimately adding in a real-time monitoring system to your to your projects can basically uh, point out where leaks are occurring or moisture accumulation has uh, um, been occurring in real time. So, and we call that building in tele uh, type monitoring. Feel free to stop me if you have any questions along the way here. Um, the, typically we get involved in conventional roof assemblies. We're putting detection tapes underneath the membrane on the dry side. We're looking for the presence of water, uh, inverted roof assemblies. We're, we're not only doing the scanning, we're also putting the detection tape on the wet side of the membrane using a 13 16 stainless steel detection tape. Um, when you talk about wood decks, we basically monitor, uh, the condition of the wood um, underneath it for looking at where the leaks occur. And we have some point moisture monitoring solutions that go into that. And I got a couple of case studies that will point that out, um, particularly with two pound spray foam on the underside of the wood deck um, coming up. So we talked about inverted roof assemblies, concrete or metal deck um, or wood deck for that matter, with an overburden putting on top on a protected roof membrane. Um, obviously, the overburden can be exchanged from these pictures of uh, concrete and gravel to a, a green living roof system. Typically, we're looking for a membrane that is an insulator to electricity and the deck, which is conductive to electricity. So you'll see here uh, we have a layer of concrete and then uh, a membrane that goes over top, a light layer of water that we spray onto the uh, roof deck, and we're able to get a roof condition by scanning it. So you'll see here that the DigiScan screen basically points to the direction of the leak as well as gives you a magnitude, a voltage magnitude of how much electricity is traveling through the deck. So if there is no holes within the area that we're scanning, you will uh, basically have uh, very little voltage, if not none, and the direction will be highly variable. So see some screenshots here. And we do have some videos. I'll also send you links to Amber to uh, go through and you can uh, have a look at them on how we set it up, how we find holes and how it is very similar to a leak, uh, sorry, a metal detector. Uh, you make contact to the membrane and then as you move closer to the leak, the magnitude uh, increases, but also the direction. As soon as you go past it, uh, the direction comes back. So these are quality assurance tool that we've put in place that uh, we find that most people pick up on in just a few hours of, of training and oversight. Uh, you're not having to get an undergraduate degree to, to figure out how to use these types of systems. And that's been the basis of, of what we do with, with all of our products. Scanning can happen immediately after construction, uh, prior to uh, covering it with the overburden. So you can actually uh, see the membrane, uh, inspect it when the, the membrane's gone in. You'll see here that there is no detection tape or grids being placed. This is just a, a pure scanning job that we're doing on a two-ply torch down. This membrane here, we found seven holes within uh, this plaza deck. Underneath here where the waterfall, about 10 feet of soil is going to be uh, for the intent, intensive planting area. 
Uh, we found about 40 holes. And on the back side of this deck, we found about 1,000 ranging from small pinholes to, to forming nails. And this was done with the same GC, the same roofing contractor, just highly variable in the uh, condition of the concrete below. And basically they had a lot of off-gassing of the primer coming through the liquid applied membrane. Obviously we don't find a lot of nails still in place. These are great photos. Typically we will find the holes though that are left from pulling the forming nails out without calling the waterproofing contractor back to the site. So non-visual items such as small pinholes we will find as well. <clears throat> During construction we're also able to get a sense of what's going on from the construction damage that's being done. I usually say that every horizontal surface gets used as a storage area and also gets used as a workspace. So the overall quality of the product is basically uh, the install can be uh, damaged even if the waterproofing contractor has done a, a great job. So it really takes a whole group of people to come together to put together a successful project. And we're one of the tools that can be used uh, to show that, uh, hey, the overall uh, system is intact and as uh, it goes forward. We can do some scanning after the fact. The uh, overall uh, membranes that we do look at most of them do get covered with extensive insulation or extensive amount of overburden. This type of ballasted system, we're able to put down a guard cable and basically scan it through and looking at condition assessments of existing roofs. Or if you have tiles right down on membranes, they work out really well as well. We use a limited amount of water in certain areas of the world. Uh, water is a very valuable resource. So doing an AC ASTM flood test has limited value because of the way that the water may not leak through a, a hole in a short period of time, like 24 hours, 48 hours, that basically the electrical methods of being able to do this are uh, far superior than doing a flood test. Well, I guess I have a little bit of a question about your building model or not your business model. Do you... Sure have your own technicians that go out and do this testing or do you train technicians or just supply the the equipment what's your mode of actually um, getting this equipment on the roof and getting this testing performed so so both of those business models smt currently takes on you can go to the website purchase equipment and training for use of one of these uh, devices we see it like an infrared camera uh, in the hands of the right person, it will give you valuable information and be used as a quality assurance tool. Uh, we also have the ability to send a technician to your site and perform a scan at a third-party application. So we see uh, this type of equipment being used by more and more uh, people within the construction industry on their own. So. Uh, doing their own quality assurance work. So my dream is to have every roofing company do their own um, digi-scan uh, down the road and use it as part of their own either internal quality assurance or part of the specified quality assurance. Uh, we know there's going to be projects where you want a third party doing it, and we can either tool up your uh, roofing inspectors or we can do it our, ourselves and provide that service. What would be helpful is if they knew how to refer your company on projects. So do they start out by sending someone to talk to you or do you have a listing of certified uh, or, or somehow licensed uh, technicians that go out and do these things? Um, just we, we're not likely to be the one that does the testing. Okay. We're more of the middle person. We're the person who says, okay, you should flood test this or you should use electronic leak detection, and here's a provider for it. Here's how you go about taking care of this. Right. Um, that's really what we need out of this, to understand the technology, but to be able to also refer people to use it. Yeah, so how we do project referrals is typically you contact us directly, and then we would refer out to your local area or wherever the project is. A lot of the, uh, and as we go through the next steps, is a lot of the projects do go with, longer term monitoring uh, as, as part of it. And that's where we get one of our application engineers involved with submitting shop drawings that are uh, applicable 
and the same applies to it. We have local crews that would take that on and typically they've been the low voltage contractors on that particular project or in that geographic area. So whether it be security and automation uh, contractors or whether it be electrical and low voltage. And also if you have um, any type of specification, um, for example, we might be able to influence something to say that uh, we recommend that you flood test, you or not flood test, but you, you test for leaks using this is the generic term electronic de leak detection appropriate or is there another term for the specific type of testing that you're doing that we should look at incorporating into specification? Yeah, so, so I just pulled up on the screen the SMT e-spec section and essentially it it has a inverted roof scanning as part of it and you're able to see what the part of the scannings are. Uh, we also have electronic grid monitoring which we will uh, go into in just a minute and each one of these are in Word and PDF. You could use a general electronic leak detection scanning spec and that would be considered our DigiScan. Moving forward so what I'll go through is sort of the more um, comprehensive options of different monitoring solutions that you're able to go in and, and we've been primarily putting those like in so that you're able to see what's going on in real time with the roof system and those aren't necessarily covered under a standard uh, spec section on electronic leak detection. So typically in a inverted roof assembly we are putting the detection tape on the wet side of the membrane and the Roofing Contract Association of British Columbia where we reside has demanded that this be installed on their warranty projects in a six foot by six foot grid fashion when you're going to put concrete over top of it, when you're going to use an overburden uh, that can be cut into with a shovel and knife, uh, typically it's going with a 10 foot by 10 foot grid. So we can locate within one grid frame as to where the leak is. So on this type of project, we're working in unison with the roofing contractor, going through and scanning and putting the grid in and they're coming with the drainage mat and insulation right away. Sometimes we get handed off a complete deck uh, to come and do a scan and install the detection tape. A lot of these projects are plaza decks or green roofs on the lower level that we're waterproofing and then working our, our way up on the project and there's a lot of damage being done from the general construction methods to those membranes. Um, so getting them covered and protected as soon as possible obviously makes sense. This particular deck we we're handed off uh, over half of it together and you'll see that hey we wired all of these together and again there's an install video uh, that I won't show right now of how this detection tape went down and then the scanning occurred. The, uh, the one area that we were able to find was this one 10 foot by 10 foot grid frame and we were able to locate the location leak within this 10 foot by 10 foot square by going and scanning it. So it, uh, it, it shows its value right in day one. Now on this particular project, we got a phone call later after the green roof had been planted and everything was in place that there was about a thousand holes within the membrane along. We got involved with the roofing repair, obviously, of not having to find and locate where each one of those holes were. But what had happened was the electrical contractor had gone in and put his conduit right up on the underside of this metal deck and drilled up with three quarter inch screws and through went through the gypsum board and through the membrane and punctured the membrane. So typical metal deck would have been done with more of a conventional roof assembly with a metal deck, vapory tartar, insulation, and then a membrane. So he'd been using three quarter inch screws for decades, uh, changed the assembly, small detail, and uh, we had a perfect storm for a large insurance payout from his insurer. Now, if it wasn't that application would have been the, the signage contractor or the CCTV guy that came into this facility and drilled up through that as it was pretty common practice without knowing exactly what was above it. So we were there for about another year um, removing each one of the sections of green roof and then doing a roofing repair, a moisture detection system repair, and then reconfirming that everything worked. It's, it's some of these projects that we get uh, right from day one uh, that we show our value.
and, and work with the contractor, the designer to put up a lower risk product is ultimately what we're doing. With a conventional monitoring system, we do get involved with putting moisture detection tapes typically on the underside of the membranes. We're looking at the accumulation of where moisture may occur. So a lot of these types of assemblies, we're putting down a moisture detection tape that gets installed. Uh, this is a telecommunications data center. So this is three feet by three feet. The grid spacing is really tight and we're not doing too many of these built up roof systems anymore. More typical grid spacing that we are seeing over a standard office environment is 10 feet by 10 feet, putting them in long detection grid spaces, according with the other services that need to go into the roof space area. Often it is a vapor retarder insulation of the membrane, but sometimes we do end up with a conduit from lighting. And you see here, we put a piece of insulating tape over top of the conduit so it does not short out our system. We also do wood decks and and uh, mechanically fastened systems as well and can pick up separate zones of monitoring such as along the perimeter uh, scupper details roof drains perimeter areas and the like and you'll see that as we bring the layers of the roof up the roofing contractor outlines where our detection systems are and uh, the fasteners will avoid it when we are talking conventional roof assemblies we are basically looking at uh, putting detection tape either down on the vapor retarder level or up in the protection board level. We can differentiate between a membrane leak, uh, construction related moisture that's been trapped within this assembly, or if it's an air barrier leak. So we do spend a lot of time uh, working during the construction process uh, that there is no construction moisture trapped within the assembly and that uh, the systems have been in, and go intact. The, uh, we'll also do the perimeter as well as any penetration that needs to be uh, within the assembly, we'll put a detection tape in around it. And we're going after this because this is where we see most of the problems. Scanning or, or looking at the field of the membranes, they're, they're really well done in these types of roofing systems where the devils in the details are typically in around where the drain has been clamped to the membrane or if the whole pipe itself is two-part assembly has been clamped together or finding that there's leakage in these points and around the perimeter details as well. On a re-roof project, typically we bring our, our cable and wire assemblies up out of the roof assembly and into electronics boxes mounted on parapet walls. On new construction projects, obviously we're, we go down and into storage rooms and and basic uh, electrical facilities down below in the building. For quotes, we can do uh, grid systems. We can do just perimeters. We can do perimeters and drains. So there's some options with conventional roof assemblies to economize and really pinpoint where you might see that there's problems down the road. The ongoing monitoring system <clears throat> helps locate where, where leaks are. And also it shows where, where things are dry. And we work with contractors uh, to show that, hey, this is a, a dry assembly over here. Uh, you don't need to do anything about it. In, the, in these areas here, there was uh, water coming down below uh, within the first year of construction. And it was identified that, hey, what was going on? And so basically the roof drains were over clamped, draining into the facility and a wall attachment detail wasn't done correctly either. So taking the water out of this assembly, being proactive and doing a repair was exactly what this long-term homeowner wanted for his building. And obviously through our system of notification of when that occurred, uh, he got that, but also the contractor had assurances that the rest of the area was fine and did not have to interrupt the uh, 400 year old trees that were planted within this area as well. We take on a lot of projects, uh, lead projects that basically uh, want to use the most sustainable building practices and, uh, one of the things that we get to see in the Pacific Northwest is a lot of use of wood, wood decks uh, with green roofs over top of them. I'll just point out now, you'll see this curb in this location with pedestals on a sloped roof. So from the inside of this project, there's a wood deck, uh, vapor retarder, insulation, TPO membrane, then with a green roof over top of it. During construction, obviously uh, getting everything intact in a wet environment is always fun, such as the one we get to live in in a rainforest. When the modern results came up, this is what we showed. Now it looks really bad because of all the red uh, lines. One of the things that 
Uh, we work with architects and specifiers all the time to specify a maximum detection tape length that you'd like to see so that we're not using a really long detection tape that we break it into half or into quarters. And then we're able to locate where uh, the water uh, is more accurately remotely that we don't have to come on site. Now, one of the innovations that we did, we also correlated weather related events and we could tell which one of these detection tapes turned on first when. So the light blue is where the water was uh, at the initial part of the construction phase. We were called in to help uh, locate where the leaks were. Did that, uh, got it intact, and it was a attachment of the TPO to the outside edge, as well as two significant uh, holes in the membrane where they put the curb in place uh, over top of that, that membrane. I may also point out uh, there's a couple of vapor vents uh, that get opened when the conditions are satisfactory for drying out this assembly. And over time, the water has been escaping from the center. And I mean, over time, this has been uh, close to four years, almost five years uh, since this went on. And there's still some localized water within these leaked areas. Uh, but overall, the owner is well aware of them and uh, knows, what, uh, knows what to expect. Other types of roofs, and again, this is where we where we break the left and right into half and the north and south into half and you're able to tell where leaks occur within these various areas. Um, the online monitoring center where all this data goes to we call analytics and we're able to get a map of what uh, detection grids have been placed where as well as graphs around it and so we can look at trends not just uh, whether things are wet and dry it's not an on off switch of, hey, it's wet, we can actually tell whether wet areas are, are getting wetter or whether they are uh, trending to a dry uh, state, indicating that there's less of a leak or that the leak has been fixed and there's less water there. One of the innovations that SMT has gone through is we are enabled to connect your roof monitoring system through BACnet to a building management system. So for institutional clients, they can look at their leak detection systems on the same screens that they would their mechanical control systems and other security-based systems. Or you can obviously give us an internet connection and we'll use SMT analytics to display the data uh, remotely and also give reports, trends, and analysis uh, on top of just what the billing management system would be able to do. Somewhat depends on what the end user uh, desires from their building. Most of these projects that have gone with BACnet have been strong institutional clients that are gonna hold their building for the long term and have invested in a campus-like environment for their building management systems. I say that, but we just completed a commercial building with the, with the same system uh, that had sophistication and wanted to be aware of what was going on. For budgeting purposes, probably just like your business, you sort of get asked off the cuff, well, how much for, for certain components? So we put together a few options. One, if you want to scan only, 25 cents a square foot. It's over a typical, but budget 35 for a 50,000 square foot project. Sort of depends where in it is and how much smaller it is. You could be purchasing a unit and starting your own scanning business uh, if you want to do that. One of the options is how many scans do you want during the construction process and how many phases of the project uh, are going to be complete at individual time. So it's probably very similar to how you look at how pricing of your business is as well. Uh, you could do on inverted roof grid assemblies. You could just do the scan and leave a stainless steel grid in place. Typically, uh, this is for owners that uh, want to leave a legacy with their buildings. Uh, never again are you going to be able to install that detection tape cost effectively prior to that overburden going in place. So we do a lot of projects this way. Uh, it's sort of what we call future proofing your building, where basically a lot of it's a buck twenty-five a square foot to two dollars a square foot, and uh, sort of depending on the size and the details of your of your project. You can put a, a scan grid and electronics in. Again. Uh, somewhat depends whether it's BACnet compatible or BACnet enabled, uh, what type of monitor do you want and how many mobilizations we have on a project, but typically a dollar eighty a square foot. Ultimately, you can submit plans for a free estimate. Uh, the more information we have about the roofing assembly, the more accurate uh, we can get. 
you give a price just based on square footage, a price for each one of those three options, or ultimately we have a consultation sheet that we work through either verbally or or what you might be doing. So what types of slope packages are in there? What's the total square footage? How many penetrations do you have? Most of the stuff we don't need to get a quote and get engagement, but it's often good stuff for for our record keeping to know if that project comes down the pipe, what we're up against. We do lots of work and we've talked about new construction for measurement and verification purposes, quality assurance. Uh, we also do lots of work in maintenance of roofing systems and wall systems of locating where leaks are as well as for installation electronics to try to prolong certain types of assemblies. And we do lots of work at the end of life of a building to do retask studies where we're looking at, hey, what is the performance of this of this wall and roof system? What is the institute measured R value? How can we make it better? What is the risk, condensation risk of what we do, say, adding insulation to the inside of a block wall? And um, we do a lot of existing buildings with wireless sensors installed. Understand what's going on, but it's because 90%, 97% of the world's buildings have already been built. So... And, uh, and it's sort of one of our little niche markets that we get into. Now in new construction, we're, we're primarily doing the roofing systems that, that I just went through. Ultimately, our monitoring systems, like the one that's here, shows a point moisture monitoring system that's going underneath a plywood deck that has two pound spray foam on the underside of it. We are seeing this assembly more. Uh, I don't know if you see it with green roofs on top of it. And we've been monitoring these for seven plus years in different formats and always find that there's moisture accumulating through the various roof assemblies in these type of areas and, and show that there is a, a value to monitoring these. The typical roof deck over heated space with wood construction is now getting foamed in underneath and the risk being that you do have water accumulation underneath the roof membrane and it can't get through the two pound closed cell spray foam and that it could do structural damage prior to it actually uh, showing up on the underside of the roofing deck. So we have installed a number of multi-unit residential buildings with we call them point moisture monitoring sensors that can be installed in around roof drain locations and give back the status of, of what's going on. So. So these types of assemblies you could do with like detection tape, like we do the larger commercial roofs, uh, but you also could do wood decks with just a point moisture monitoring sensor that the water that would accumulate in this wood would ultimately uh, come down to the lowest source, come down to the drain, report back as to what's going on in these types of assemblies. So again, through our automated monitoring center, we were able to correlate this to weather related events. So you have water uh, in the form of rain falling when it's blue, yellow sunlight, and then this is the moisture content. So basically between zero and 19% is considered a dry state. Above 19 to 27% is considered a cautionary. Hey, wood's starting to get saturated. And above that, wood is saturated and sort of in a, can't maintain there, maintain above 27% for a long period of time. So uh, we have a number of these types of assemblies which have been monitored and, and go through that. So all these little types of monitoring uh, solutions under window systems, uh, polyiso shrinkage, uh, comparison of different roofing systems. We do uh, quite a bit of work with the uh, manufacturers of membranes and insulation systems for both walls and roofs for evaluation of different types of assemblies. So uh, looking at different membrane colors and membrane types and how they perform. And we're installing temperature sensors, relative humidity, moisture content sensors, uh, displacement movement sensors, and heat flux sensors. And these all give you a very valuable thermal energy profile of these types of assemblies. So this is coming more into our specialized research side of what we do. And <clears throat> we're able to get a sense of comparatively what is the energy uh, that, that's being saved by installing different insulation regimes or different membrane colors and membrane types. If you're interested, we have an RCI paper uh, that was done by RDH uh, available for, for download.
We use webcams within our business to basically look at, uh, this is a shot from the same webcam and we're able to look at how membranes age over time on this particular uh, issue. We also do reflectivity in situ where this is solar radiation sensor uh, that's pointed straight down on the white membrane in two locations, one on a ridge, one in a, in a valley. So, and one also in the gray membrane. So the uh, thought being is that the uh, solar reflectivity obviously will change as the membrane ages and uh, slowly gets dirty. So we're watching that over time. Doing the um, moisture content and uh, sensors for uh, roof systems. And that's primarily where, where I think that our paths would cross. In the other areas on the research side, it somewhat depends if there's a, a question to be answered or a project and or a client that uh, would like a comparative style of, of monitoring we're able to uh, take that on and then work with experts of, of consultants that if you need to get the data up to then, you can give it to them in a usable format.